And more and more these days, my thoughts turn to nature's silent moments and what nature can teach us in her wisdom. We simply have to put aside our religious, cultural, and racial differences, and we simply have to protect this world of ours. Good planets are hard to find. Gandhi got it right when he said there is more to life than increasing its speed. And our good friend Paul Hawken also got it right today in his very moving speech when he so eloquently explained how we all share this beautiful planet and how we all have to work together to save it. I recently attended an award ceremony in New York for an organization founded by President Dwight D. Eisenhower. And Eisenhower got it right too when he said, every gun that is made, every warship that is launched, every rocket fired signifies, in the final sense, a theft from those who hunger and are not fed, those who are cold and are not, and not clothed. This world in arms is not about spending money alone. It is spending the sweat of our laborers, the genius of our scientists, and the hopes of our children. I see our job as filmmakers and businessmen to ensure that the media is, no, is more than mere entertainment, that it becomes once again a major force in shaping our lives, especially the lives of the young. So now let me finish by giving you a glimpse of our next two films. The first clip you will see is from a film about pollinators, particularly bees. And the film is called Hidden Beauty, a love story that feeds the earth. At a time when bee colonies are collapsing all over the world, threatening the very basis of much of our food production, this film is a potent reminder of the fragile ecosystem we live in. The second clip is from a film, an IMAX film called Jerusalem. This film is currently in pre-production and is a unique and equal collaboration among Christians, Jews, and Muslims that we will be shooting in a few months' time. The film is entirely 100% funded by contributions from corporate and individual donors, and all proceeds of the film will go to good works for all three religious groups in Jerusalem. I can think of no better example of the power of the media to educate and inform than these two projects. So we'll have these two clips, and then I'll come back and very, very briefly introduce Journey to Mecca. Thank you. Travel back in time to a land steeped in layers of history and cherished as the birthplace of monotheism. Explore this crossroads of the world through the stories of people who call it home.
So now for the main feature. Uh, the film you're about to see, Journey to Mecca, re represents a unique collaboration between East and West. Uh, shot in IMAX format for a giant screen exhibition and in two separate versions, Arabic and English. The film was financed by investors in the US, Canada, Europe, and the Middle East. This film absolutely could not have been made without the gracious support of the custodian of the two holy mosques, His Majesty King Abdullah, and the worldwide presenters of the film, the King Abdulaziz Public Library and the King Faisal Center for Research and Islamic Studies, who were both instrumental in its, film, in its production. Uh, the filmmakers also benefited greatly from the visionary leadership of His Royal Highness Prince Turki Al Faisal, His Excellency Faisal Muammar, the Vice Minister of Education, and private sector investors, most particularly my good friend Dr. Abdul Rahman Al Zamil, who I hope is here, here tonight with us, and I would like to salute him in particular for his support. With the support of all these people, the multilingual, multicultural, multi-religious cast, multi-religion cast and crew worked together seamlessly to tell the story of the Hajj seen through the eyes of the 14th century Ibn Battuta. The film runs for 40 minutes and I uh, would be very happy to stay behind after if it's not too late to answer questions. Thank you very much for your attention and for seeing this film.